What's up, y'all? It's time to get higher with your girl, B. Big Earth Energy. That's what we're bringing. Be aware. Earth aware. Handle with care. Yes, these talks right here are to promote the higher consciousness of caring for our planet. Welcome back, guys. Uh, my name's B. For those of you who don't know me, I'm an environmental artist. I am utilizing my degree of environmental studies and sustainability and what I've learned to share it with others and creatively educate people in fun and creative ways. These talks right here are to just talk about some of the basics of um, environmental issues and what's surrounding them, just talk about it a little bit, educate a little bit, and then talk about how we can do something about it, how we can incorporate sustainability into our everyday lifestyle to really have a more positive impact on our earth. So let's get into it. I have a little bit different setup today. I hope you guys like it. This is just a music room, so kind of utilizing all my spaces. All right, so today we're talking about global climate change. So our Earth's climate has been changing constantly, even uh, before humans were in the picture, it's been changing. However, scientists have noticed in the last 150 years that our planet is increasing in temperature way faster than ever expected. So what are some of the causes of climate changing? Well, there's many different factors and I will go into um, what exactly entails our climate. But basically right now, human activities is a large um, factor in why it's warming so quickly. Basically certain gases get trapped in our atmosphere and don't get to escape. This is called the greenhouse effect, which I will further explain in this talk today. Now, as we get more of these gases trapped, our planet warms even more. So human uh, activity such as us plant powering factories, cars and buses um, through the combustion of fossil fuels, that is really detrimental and it releases a lot of those gases out into our atmosphere, which then get caught and lead to our earth warming. So when we talk about global climate change, it's usually just referred to as climate change, but it is the entire system of our earth. Now, aspects of climate change include temperature, precipitation, and the frequency and intensity of storms. People will often say global warming as a synonymous uh, to global climate change, but they are different. So the climate change is all the aspects. Global warming is one of those aspects and it does drive many components of climate change. So global climate change does refer to our average long-term change of the entire earth. This includes, like I stated, the temperature, precipitation, storms. This also includes rising sea levels, uh, shrinking mountain glaciers and the ice melting changes in flower and plant blooming, as well as we are now seeing uh, animal populations and their migration patterns because, patterns because animals tend to use cues of the weather to do things. So we're seeing it affecting our entire system. So just a quick overview of Earth's climate. There are three main factors that affect Earth's climate. The first is the sun. Without the sun, Earth would just be one big, dark, frozen ball. <laughs> so second is our atmosphere. Now, this protective layer of gases keeps our Earth at a warm, livable temperature, and it also makes our days and nights not as drastic of temperature differences because we have the atmosphere to protect it. And third is our oceans. Oceans store and transport heat and moisture. So these are the three main factors that are involved in Earth's climate. 
Now the sun supplies majority of our planet's energy. So the atmosphere, clouds, land, ice, water, all of that absorbs the energy. About 70% of our solar radiation is absorbed and the other 30% goes back out into space. So the 70% though that's absorbed is what warms the surface and the atmosphere and powers everything. The wind, the waves, and evaporation, photosynthesis, stuff like that. So this cycle of solar radiation coming in and being absorbed and bouncing out is called the greenhouse effect. When it comes to what traps in the warmth to our planet, there are gases that play a very important role in trapping that heat and they are called greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gases have three or more atoms and they're molecules that absorb infrared radiation. Um, the main greenhouse gases that there are is ozone, water vapor, carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, and methane. Now, all of these gases have global warming potential, which is basically how much they contribute to warming our planet. That's generally how we measure the, their potency. So I just wanted to run through what uh, greenhouse gases were so that we could understand the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect is pretty much like a greenhouse. Uh, there are glass walls and a roof and the sun is able to come in and heat is trapped inside. Even when it becomes night, the inside of the greenhouse will stay warm. Now this is very similar to what our earth does. It traps the sun's heat into the atmosphere and makes the earth a really warm, comfortable place to live. So this system also has ways of the greenhouse effect being reduced. Now, just like a greenhouse, it's full of plants. Well, plants play a vital role in reducing greenhouse gases as well. Giant trees, uh, little phytoplankton in the ocean, they all take in carbon dioxide and they release oxygen. Now, like I said, carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas. So it's very convenient to have these plants turning it into oxygen, which we breathe, and removing the greenhouse gas, and therefore removing some of that warming potential that's in the atmosphere. Unfortunately though, as there's more carbon dioxide in our air, other things start to happen. Our ocean water starts to change and it becomes more acid. acid. So like I said, the ocean absorbs a lot of our heat and it also absorbs a lot of carbon dioxide. So unfortunately, more acidic water is very harmful to our ocean and ocean creatures. Shellfish and our coral is dying off because of ocean acidification. So the greenhouse effect is definitely normal for our planet and makes it habitable, but humans are impacting the greenhouse effect. By burning fossil fuels like coal and oil, we're putting more CO2 out into the atmosphere. And that, as a greenhouse gas, means it's trapping more and more heat, and that's causing our Earth to warm up. So how much is Earth's climate really changing, you might ask? Our surface temperature has raised two degrees within 100 years. And scientists have said the past five years have been the warmest in centuries. And this is very concerning. As our planet continues to warm, there is going to be increase in amount of rainfall, storms, hurricanes, weather events are going to be more intense, droughts and heat waves, which cause more fires. All of this is effects of our climate changing. When the whole world changes by just one or two degrees, there are big impacts. So this means it's really important that we try to do everything that we can to prevent this warming because it is affecting everything.
Now we can already see this happening because there are weather events that are becoming way more intense, threatening people's lives and displacing homes. With further warming, places are gonna become inhabitable. Farmland will turn to desert, and in other places, there will be so much rainfall, it'll cause flooding. Coastal countries and poorer countries will be impacted the most and, ha and are already needing to adapt to climate change. And this is only gonna get worse. Scientists believe that at least 550 species could be lost this century if no action is taken. In a warmer world, it makes it harder for animals to find food and water that they need. And it also makes it very hard for us to grow our crops and have land that is safe for us to all live as we have a increasing population. What scientists have found is that the goal should be to keep our rise within 1.5 degrees Celsius to stay safe. So you guys might ask, what are our governments doing? So back in 2015, the Paris Agreement was an international treaty on climate change, which covered mitigation, adaptation, and finance with 196 parties working together at the UN Climate Conference. Recently, COP26 was the climate conference that happened in Glasgow to come back and submit new climate plans. Everyone was in agreement that we needed to stay under 1.5 um, degrees of warming. However, countries did not commit to nearly enough emissions cuts by 2030 and it's calculated that the plans that stand now have our planet on track for warming 2.5 degrees Celsius, which is over the limit that scientists recommend we go over. Many countries pledged to be net zero by 2050, and this means reducing greenhouse gases as much as possible. The 1.5 is still achievable, but unfortunately what COP26 showed us was that not all of the governments and countries were willing to cut as much as they needed. So where does this leave us? In my opinion, I think that it's up to individuals to start doing their part. We need to be living our everyday life with less of a carbon footprint. So things that we can do in our everyday life to lower our carbon footprint starts a lot with transportation. Now, as far as traveling and flights go, if you can take fewer flights, that is definitely going to lower it. When it means uh, driving a car, if you can walk or bike or have a different option, it's definitely going to lower your footprint. When it comes to our homes, we can get more energy efficient products. And we can also switch gas heating systems to electric. This can really lower the footprint of our house. We as individuals really need to exercise our rights as citizens and consumers. We definitely need to put pressure on our governments, but another way is in our consumption and the things that we buy. We really need to be more conscious. I like to say, let's vote with our wallet because it does really matter what you buy you have power in your dollar so if you can do a little more research and make sure that the companies that you are going through are carbon neutral or the products have a climate pledge friendly sticker these are things that mean that the company has done their part to offset their emissions so that means the product is carbon neutral I have a video on why I'm a vegetarian and that is largely because our food industry is a huge emitter of greenhouse gases. So simply even by changing your diet, you are making an impact and lowering your carbon footprint. Clothing also plays a big role. The clothing sector is makes up 3% of our CO2 emissions. So 
if you can buy secondhand consignment or thrifted, these things are going to lower the impact and you're also making that item have more longevity and it's better for the environment. Now, some people might just be like, yeah, yeah, this is just me. If I make those changes, like how big of a deal is that anyways? Well, social scientists have found that if one person makes a more sustainable oriented decision, other people around them do too. So you're not just doing it and it's only you. You influence the people around you. And so that's why I really want to encourage a sustainable lifestyle because when we live it the people around us see it and they're influenced and just like i said too when we vote with our wallets we are making a statement and telling the world what we want we don't want to keep acting and having our actions negatively impact our planet and warm our planet i'll probably make a separate video about this but currently um, i've been seeing a lot uh, in the art sector especially of like trying to make money with NFTs and crypto. And that's really scary because those things are heating our planet a lot too because the mining for coin involves our fossil fuel industry and the energy consumption of it. Even if you do a carbon neutral coin, the energy consumption cannot be uh, changed. It's, it's insane. So there are things that we definitely should be conscious about and not do and i will probably like i said make a video a little bit more in detail about those areas but for now i encourage you if you want to see what your carbon footprint is now i'm going to link down below a quiz you can take you basically just answer some simple things and it'll tell you how many worlds it takes to live the way you do. I've taken it several times when I was in my studies uh, last year. I just finished my degree in environmental studies. So um, I got to take these and I, as I made changes, I got to see how my footprint decreased. And it, it feels really good to be able to see that you can live within one world, but I'll, I'll be honest in the beginning, I, I did not live within one world. I was, I was living out of my means. And I think it's really enlightening to be able to take a test and really be able to see um, what your carbon footprint is and where it lies. And it's really helpful because it can help you on the tips like we talked about already on where you can reduce and it'll show you how much you'll reduce your footprint. So I'm gonna link that down below. And also, if you guys are interested in any charities or other climate-oriented um, companies, I'm going to leave a few links down below so you can check them out because if you can't make changes right away, at least donating to some places that are already doing climate action is a really good thing too. Just like the movie uh, in Don't Look Up, I'm going to say we definitely need to look up and we need to wake up. It's time to be more conscious and give a damn about our planet, so... We got this y'all. I'll see you guys later. Bye.